All right, so that clip you guys saw was Kai Sinat finally beating Elden Ring after 166 hours of streaming. That's insane to me. 100, or excuse me, 1,701 deaths later. I don't know how that matches up to me beating Elden Ring, but congratulations, Kai Sinet. I hear we're going to be talking about why it was so hard for him to... Uh, beat Elden Ring, how long it took her to beat Elden Ring, and why Elden Ring is so hard in this small little bit of the Elden Ring. Kai said that originally predicted the game would take him anywhere between 70 plus hours to weeks, perhaps even a month. Uh, it really, in the end, it took him 166 hours, 167 if you want to include like stream time, before and after. Um, that means Kai Sinet played Elden Ring for nearly 7 days straight, 6.9 days to be exact. This, these stats are insane. Elden Ring, May 17th he beat it, you know, started off May 10th, the marathon. Kai Sinet, like many players, found Elden Ring challenging due to several reasons inherent to the game's design and his own gameplay style. Number one, we're starting off with Kai Sinet's troubles with the game. One game difficulty, Elden Ring developed by From Software, is known for its high difficulty level. The game requires precise timing, strategic thinking, and patience, which can be a steep learning curve for many players, especially those new to the genre. We all know Kai Sinet. He's quick on his feet, quick learner, quick thinking, but uh, strategic maybe precise timing eh, maybe the learning curve oh man did he have to learn that learning curve? he climbed it though he did climb it all right number two complex mechanics this goes in line with the strategic thinking and the precise timing the game incorporates complex mechanics including intricate combat system diverse enemy types and elaborate boss fights mastering these mechanics is essential but challenging and once again kai sinet was stuck on several bosses the first boss took him so long and that was one of the reasons why it was uh, pretty hard for him to conquer Elden Ring. Number three, exploration and non-linear progression. Now, if you guys don't know this, right off the gate in Elden Ring, you can go and fight this guy. I forgot his name off the top of my head. I can't remember. But there's this guy on a horse. It took me two and a half hours to beat this guy. Nobody told me, right? I didn't find out till later that you can just come back and fight this guy. I was so used to the, the DS3 type, the linear progression, where you would just go in and you have to fight this guy, then this guy, then this guy. That's not the case for Elden Ring. You can just go straight to the end of the game if you really wanted to. I mean, not directly to the end of the game. You got to do some stuff before that. But uh, Elden Ring features a vast open world with non-linear progression. Players need to explore, gather resources, and uncover hidden areas, which can be overwhelming and time-consuming. Uh, once again, amounting to that crazy time slot that Kaisen had. 166, oh, that's insane. I think it took me, what, 80 hours? Number four, though, streaming pressure. Now, I brought this in because, you know, not only is Kaisen having to deal with these stressful situations, but he also has uh, a huge following, and everybody on Twitch seemed to be just watching him. I mean, as a popular streamer, Kaisen faces additional pressure while playing live. The need to entertain an audience can distract from focusing on the game, making it harder to overcome difficult sections. Sometimes I feel like he was dying to, to be a meme and try other times I feel like he was going out of his way to not really do the things he was supposed to be doing in the Elden Ring thing. Again, he's still entertaining the masses as well as trying to fight these really, really hard bosses. So you really got to pick and choose. He made the most of that too. Like he got 160. Dude, that's insane. And the amount of viewers he was getting is like 80, 90, 100,000 people watching him easily. Number five, we talked about this before, the learning curve. The steep learning curve going from the game difficulty, but the learning curve here, especially for Elden Ring, I think deserves its own category, especially for players not accustomed to from software games like Kaisenet. The learning curve is particularly steep. Kaisenet likely had to spend significant time understanding game mechanics, enemy patterns, and optimal strategies. Um, we got to see this firsthand, absolutely insane. But these are the five facts of why it took Kaisenet so long to uh, beat Elden Ring. These factors combined likely contributed to Kaisenet's struggle with beating Elden Ring. A an experience shared by many who take on the challenge of this notoriously difficult game and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next segment uh why elden ring is hard in the first place i mean you know number one we got complex mechanics um complex combat mechanics the combat in elden ring is intricate and requires precise timing strategic planning and a deep understanding of enemies attack patterns players must learn to dodge block counterattack effectively which can be challenging and demands practice and skill Number two, my reason for why Elden Ring is so difficult, the punishing enemy design. Enemies in Elden Ring are designed to be formidable, with many having the capability to deal significant damage or employ complex attack sequences. Bosses, in particular, are known for their difficulty, often requiring multiple attempts and learning phases to defeat multiple bosses with multiple phases, give you multiple battle scenarios, and it could be just one battle. Alright, number three, exploration 
and world design. The world structure of Elden Ring encourages exploration, but often leads players into areas with high-level enemies and hidden dangers. This unpredictability adds to the challenge as players must be cautious and prepared for tough encounters at any moment in time. You have no idea. Is that chest a mimic? Nobody's a friend in Elden Ring, but there is the one lady you can get a hug. It does decrease your health, but it boosts the fuck out of your damage. I'm not going to lie, guys. Please go hug the lady. I forgot the lady's name. It's been so long since I played Elden Ring. I forgot her name. Number four, limited resources. And high stakes uh, resources such as healing items and ammunition are limited, making resource management absolutely crucial, bar none that has to be your, your main priority. Additionally, when players die, they lose their collected runes. Um, those are used for leveling up and buying items, if you guys didn't know that, at the place of their death, requiring them to retrieve them without dying again. If you die before you get your runes, it's gone. It's over. You're not getting them. Uh, number five, minimal hand-holding. Elder Ring does not hold your hand. Elder Ring tells you, yo, you're in this world, go kill some things. You don't even know the story. You have to find the story. It's insane. You literally have to find your path. Find the kin, the light, if you will. Elder Ring offers minimal guidance. It does not provide extensive tutorials or maps, encouraging players to figure out mechanics, discover secrets, and develop strategies independently. This lack of hand-holding can make the game a bit more challenging for others, especially if you're a new player, so keep that in mind. Number five, there is no hand-holding. All right, number six, Punishing death system. Guys, you die once in Elder Ring, big whoop. You die a hundred times in Elder Ring, you're in deep trouble. Oh man, you're in trouble. When players die, they are respawn at the last checkpoint or fireplace, losing their accumulated resources, which they must recover without dying again. The system raises the stakes of each encounter and heightens the tension and difficulty as you move your way through the world. These elements combine create a challenging yet rewarding experience that appeals to many gamers who appreciate overcoming difficult obstacles through perseverance and skill development. Perseverance, determination, uh, skill development, uh, strategic deployment. Um, those are my six points on why Elder Ring is... is one of the most difficult games I've ever played. Um, I'm proud of you, Kaisen. Kaisen did it, bro. He actually did it. Let me know if you guys beat Elden Ring. Uh, let me know what's your guys' six points on why the game's so hard. Maybe your five points on why Kaisen took so long to beat the game. Let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you all in the next one. Subscribe if you're new, and I'm out of here.